But they are amongst us, those who are Muslims, who would look at him and say to us, you are wrong, he is not Dajjal. We are saying to them, brother, this is Dajjal. This is Dajjal. And they will say, no, this is not Dajjal. Why? They will say, the Prophet said, Dajjal sees with one eye. He's blind in the right other eye. It looks like a bulging grip, but this man is seeing with two eyes. So he cannot be Dajjal. The Prophet said, Wasallam, every Prophet has warned his people about Dajjal. And Nabi Nuh warned his people about Dajjal. But I'm going to tell you something that no one ever said before me. Dajjal sees with his left eye. He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord is not one eye. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word kafir, kafara. And every mu'min will be able to read it. Whether the mu'min is literate or illiterate, he'll still be able to read. This is the hadith. So they will say, this man sees with two eyes, so he cannot be Dajjal. And we are going to say, this is Dajjal. What's the explanation? We say that when the jazz sees with the left eye, the left eye symbolizes external sight. When the jazz is blind in the right eye, the right eye symbolizes internal blindness. And so there's a lot of symbolism connected with the subject of the jazz. And so this man is the Dajjal, seeing with two eyes, but he's internally blind. And those who follow Dajjal will be internally blind, even with a PhD from MIT, internally blind, if you're following Dajjal. The Prophet said, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, about Dajjal. that he would ride on a donkey and the donkey would travel as fast as the clouds and the donkey would have his ears stretched out wide my opinion which I hope you will share with me is that that donkey is already here in the world this is religious symbolism with which we began the lecture. The donkey is the modern aircraft. And since the Antichrist brings with him the modern aircraft, the Antichrist commands the skies. You can't you cannot compete with him or rival him in power in the skies above. He said that the Antichrist will step into the ocean and the water will reach him up to his knee. Again, I want to suggest to you that we're dealing with religious symbolism here. It is not to be understood literally as a donkey. It is not to be understood literally as a man who is a few miles tall. Rather, it is the technology which allows you to go down to the bottom of the ocean and pick up pieces of an aircraft which crashed and reassemble the aircraft 95% that technology is in the world today the Antichrist 
would be jumping about between the heavens and the earth. Jumping about. Said the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Again I want to suggest to you. That this is not to be interpreted literally. That we are dealing with religious symbolism. It refers to our modern exploration of the heavens above. The satellites that go around the earth and the shuttle aircrafts that go up and down. In fact, <coughs> in all of these we see pointers towards a scientific and technological revolution which would sweep the world and the mastermind behind that scientific and technological revolution is the Antichrist. When the Jal declares, I am the Masih, the Messiah, it is at that time that he will launch his attack on Medina. Because the Jews lived in Medina. And the Prophet said والسلام, that Dajjal is going to land outside of Medina in a salty marshy land outside of Medina. And when he lands outside of Medina, the Prophet said that Medina is going to shake three times. Please read the booklet outside on this subject. Medina returns to center stage in Akhiru Zaman. Medina is going to shake three times. <laughs> And every kafir and every munafik is going to be thrown out. And they'll go and join that job. I don't know how many are going to be left in Medina after that. And then the angels are going to block him from entering Medina. The whole world is going to be watching at that time. Everywhere in the world people are going to be watching at that time that an Israeli attack has been launched on Medina and they have landed outside the city of Medina and they cannot enter Medina because the angels Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam spoke 1400 years ago and he said only a prophet could speak like that that the angels will block them they cannot enter and the angels will divert the attack to Damascus and so the Israeli attack will head to Damascus and Dajjal is going to be outside the masjid and Imam al-Mahdi is going to be inside the masjid and it will be time of Salat and it is at that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends back Nabi Isa alayhi salam which is the subject of our lecture and he's going to come down with his hands resting on the wings of two angels if you are 17 years of age and you are Boston and you're listening to this lecture this is knowledge that they don't teach in universities and as he comes down into the masjid, Imam al-Mahdi will say, here he is. This is the Messiah. Imam al-Mahdi will ask him to lead the Salat. And he says, no, you are the Imam, you lead. And after he has led the Salat, Nabi Isa al-Islam, of course, will pray the way we pray. In accordance with the Sharia of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. After the Salat is over, he'll say, open the gates because the masjid is barricaded. And as he comes outside, Dajjal is going to see him. And Dajjal is going to melt like salt melts in water and flee. Running for their life. And so we say to the Zionists today, we say to the Anglo-American Judeo-Christian Alliance, which is stamping its bloody foot on the world, we say to them today, you flying high, but there's a tomorrow to this coming, when you're going to be running for dear life. So we're not going to give up hope. 
We're going to hold on until that day comes. Nabi Isa is going to pursue him and catch him in a place called Lud in the Holy Land. So from Damascus to Lud and kill him and raise his spear and show the blood. When Dajjal is killed, he passes into non-existence. The rest of us will be raised on judgment day and stand before Allah for judgment. But Dajjal passes into non-existence. Nabi Isa alayhi salam and Imam al-Mahdi will now rule the world. Now the state of Israel is without any support. Now it's going to be a level battlefield, a level battlefield. I may be wrong, but I suspect that there's going to be a massive collapse of the world of modern technology. I suspect that. And so horses are now going to be used once again. Yeah. The army now comes out of Khorasan and that army attacks and destroys the state of Israel. The first time it was a Babylonian army. The second time it was a Roman army. And after the Roman army destroyed them and threw them out of the land, Allah said, وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدْنَا وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدْنَا if you return with your facade, we will return with our punishment. They return with their facade. It's happening now before your eyes. And so Allah returns with his punishment. And so now the Muslim army destroys the state of Israel. It is at this time that the Prophet said, والسلام, the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, you will know who is the true leader amongst the Muslims today. Because you'll not be afraid to quote this hadith. And you'll know those who betray Islam because they will never quote this hadith. Never. They'll lose their jobs. Muslim. <laughs> Ah, if you're 17 years of age tonight, this is music in your heart. Yeah, if the beard is gray, well, things are not the same anymore. You will most certainly fight the Jews. And you'll most certainly kill them. And at that time, the stones will speak. Muslim, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. Hmm? And so the Holy Land is liberated. This ends the subject.